What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to publish your own Python package onto pip, onto PyPI, so that other programmers at home can type pip install your package name and install your module at home and use your functionality in their projects. So I'm going to guide you through the process of how to do that in this video. And I'm also going to share the story of how I did this for my module for my pip library called vidstream. So let us get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at vidstream so that you get a basic idea of what such a project could look like. And then we're going to talk about how to do this with your own project with your own idea. Um, however, I want to mention one thing here, PyPI doesn't have a filter for quality. So you can literally just publish a Hello World package, you don't need to publish something useful, if you just want to play around. Now, of course, I encourage you to publish something useful, um, and to contribute in a meaningful way to the Python community. But if you just want to play around and you want to publish an adding script that just adds numbers or a number guessing game or a, um, I don't know, a Hello World program, you can still do that. There's no one telling you, you're not allowed to publish your Hello World package because it's too stupid and too useless. So you can publish literally everything here. Um, of course, in a legal context, you should not do anything illegal, but you can just, you know, publish your Hello World script. So the basic structure of the project is that you have a setup.py file, a license, a readme and so on, then you have the package itself. And in vidstream, we just have the streaming.py package, um, or the streaming.py file with some functionality here. But we're not going to get into code. Actually, the only thing that I want to tell you here, it's not mandatory to have a GitHub repository, but it helps. So instead of just having your code locally writing it and then always updating it to PyPI, which is this platform here. Um, I would recommend having a GitHub repository where you can just upload stuff and change stuff and commit stuff. And people can write issues and have pull requests and they can fork it and they can work on it. And you have a pull request, you add their functionality and so on. This is something that I would recommend you to do. It's not mandatory as far as I know. So you can still publish on PyPI without having a GitHub repository. But before you do anything, I would just recommend publishing this on uh, GitHub here as well. So the basic structure is the setup.py file, we're going to talk about that in detail. Uh, but the first step is definitely set up a GitHub repository, create a GitHub account, click the plus here new repository and just set up the basic repository. And then we're going to talk about the structure in it. So one thing that you also want to do is you want to go to pypi.org and register for an account and then you want to reserve a name. So if you're having, for example, uh, an audio modification library, maybe you want to call it Audimod, if this name is not already taken. Uh, it's important that you register that name so that you create a project, you don't have to add the code immediately. But you just want to create the project and say, Okay, this is Audimod uh, 001 or something, uh, just so that no one else takes the name. Because if you run a GitHub repository, if you create a GitHub repository with that name, and you have an audience or something, of course, you want to make sure that no one takes the name. So you create an account here and you register the name. Alright, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to create the library structure or the directory structure that's needed for the library. And for this, we are going to create a base folder here. And inside of that base folder, we have the library name folder. So another directory with uh, the name of the library. So hello world one, two, three, or vidstream or numpy, and so on. And we're going to look at this in the terminal. So we're going to navigate to the base folder inside there we have the lib name, so the library name. And inside of that we have the code. So we're going to open this up in vim and you're going to see the directory tree here. We basically have the uh, the base folder lib name and then we have hello.py in here we can put some code, I don't know, uh, we can define a function, say hello, and it's going to print Hello world like that. We're going to write that and what we also need to have in that library uh, folder is we're going to have an init file. So we're going to have um, an underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py file. And in here, we're just going to have the import. So we're going to say, actually, I need to look up the notation, I think we need to say from the file name and not from the library. So we need to say from hello, import say hello, like that. And this is important so that we recognize this as a module. So that's the basic structure, we have a base folder, we have the library name. And then we also have the 
uh, Python files in there that we need and an init.py file. So that it's recognized as a module with the respective imports. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and create a setup.py file and we're not going to write it from scratch. We're going to use this uh, vidstream setup.py file as a template here. So just go ahead to uh, the GitHub of Neural9 vidstream and then <clears throat> we're going to copy all of that here. And we're going to run this clear and we're going to create the setup.py file. However, we're not going to do this in the lib name. So we're not going to do this in the actual library folder. We're going to do it one level above in the base folder. So we're going to say setup.py. By the way, don't be confused that I'm using the terminal. You can just uh, use your desktop system. You can use Notepad++. You can use uh, VS Code and all the other editors. I'm just going to use uh, the terminal here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set this to paste and I'm going to paste all of this here. And uh, now we have all those things that are very specific to Vidstream. So we're going to remove some things here. For example, we're going to remove uh, this information up here and we're going to change the version. So we're going to change the version to 001 for the initial release. We're going to change the description to a basic hello package. And we're going to change the long description to a basic hello package long description or something like that. Uh, the name of course has to be changed to something else. So for example, hello, P, K, G, A, B, C, I don't know what, something that's not taken. Uh, then put your author name in here, put your email in here. Uh, what do we have here? Undefined long description. Oh yeah. Actually, why is it undefined? We can actually forget about, about the long description here. Let's just ignore it. Um, then we have packages, find packages, not really important. Then we have install requires, which essentially means uh, what do we require when someone installs this particular module. For example, if you install Vidstream, you also automatically install OpenCV and PyAuto GUI because those are important for screen sharing and for camera transmission and so on. Uh, in this case, we're not going to need anything and the keywords are just the keywords. I'm going to leave them the same. And in the classifiers, you can specify some stuff like um, the status of the development. So are we planning right now? Are we actually releasing production, whatever uh, the intended audience? Then you can also specify this is work for Python 3, Python 2, uh, and on what operating system the uh, systems does, does this work. Um, you're also going to need setup tools. I think this is actually a core Python module. I'm not sure if it's not, you're just going to have to say pip3 install setup tools. Uh, but I actually think it's core Python. So yeah. And once we have all of that, once we have the structure here, I'm going to show it once again, we have a base folder, we have a setup.py file, we have a lib name folder. Inside of that lib name folder, we have the Python files and the init.py file. Uh, again, if you need some guidance on the structure, you can just check out, um, check out the project vidstream here. You can see that we have setup.py file here, readme md file here, license, and in here we have, uh, the same structure, right? So you can use this as a guideline. And once we have that, we're going to navigate out of this and we're going to say Python three setup dot py s dist b dist wheel. And it's working and it's creating the package. And when we're done, we have a bunch of different libraries here. We can actually go to the desktop and look at them. Uh, we have the base folder here and we have all the stuff and the actual thing, the actual uh, package is now here in the dist folder. So this is the thing that we're going to upload to PyPI. So last but not least, we're going to have to upload this to PyPI. And this is very easy. We just go into the terminal again. Uh, you can also use CMD on, on Windows. And what we do then is we say pip or pip3 install twine. This is the tool that we're going to use for the upload. And it's going to, okay, for me, it's already satisfied. So we have twine and what we do with twine is we say twine upload dist slash star. So we want to upload the content of the dist and it's then going to ask for username and password. Now I'm not going to do this here because I don't want to upload a hello, hello package ABC. I just want to show you the process. So what you do here is you follow the whole process that we did up until now. You just create a structure. You have the setup file, you have the init file, uh, you have the names and, and the descriptions and so on. Then you install twine, you, you say twine upload dist slash star and here you enter 
the credentials that you use to sign up or to register on PyPI. So when we created an account on PyPI, you used a certain username, you created a certain repository and so on. Or actually, I think it's, it's created automatically. I'm not even sure about that. Uh, but basically, you enter your username, your password, and then your package is available. In a couple of minutes, people should be able to, I'm going to abort this here, uh, people should be able to type pip or pip3, install your package name. So hello, pkg, abc in this case. Uh, and they can have all the functionality. Now, this is not a detailed implementation. I didn't show you any specific steps on how to structure those, um, those modules, how to write the code in an efficient way. This is just a basic tutorial on how you can create this structure and how you can publish your own first Python package. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this on Python packages or on how to structure projects for PIP and how to actually uh, program something useful for PIP, uh, let me know in the comment section. Maybe I'm going to do more videos on it. Uh, other than that, also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.